This is why you should never snoop on your neighbors. You never know what you might discover. Our story begins with Kale, a young student, and his father Daniel fishing in a freshwater swamp. On their way home, they get into a serious car accident. Rest in peace, Dad. That was one year ago. Now in the present, we see Kale dozing off in a Spanish class. His teacher, Senor Guterres, throws an eraser at him to wake him up. Senor Guterres confronts Kale and asks him why he shouldn't fail him on the spot. Then he hits him with the classic line, What would your father think? Uh-oh, trouble is brewing. Now we find ourselves in a courtroom. Kale and his mother, along with his teacher, are present. The judge, aware of Kale's recent loss, sentences him to just three months of wearing an ankle bracelet during the summer break. Back at home, two officers fit Kale with the ankle bracelet. There is a 100-meter radius surrounding the GPS modem, and if he steps outside that radius or unplugs it, the police will be alerted. If he steps outside, he only has 10 seconds before help arrives. No fooling around. As Kale's mother goes into the other room to pay the fee, he's left alone with the other officer. You're the Spanish teacher? You're my cousin? Well, your cousin is quite annoying, Kale remarks. With nothing better to do, Kale starts his three-month house arrest by binge-watching every episode of Minute Movies. Thanks for the views. Now, what better snack to enjoy than extra crunchy peanut butter covered in Hershey's chocolate sauce? Oh, you can't handle the taste? Must be weak. Later, his mom comes home and is disgusted by the messy environment he has been lazying around in. Relatable. Out of frustration, she cuts the cable connection and cancels his Roblox subscription. Talk about tough love. Clean up your room. Kale spends the next few hours doing laundry, cleaning the house, and chugging down Red Bull. Well, that productive streak didn't last long. Later, Kale wakes up to the sound of a moving truck and sees a new family moving in next door. He looks on with interest, though his attention is quickly diverted as the doorbell rings. He opens the door to find a burning paper bag. He puts it out with his foot, but soon realizes his mistake. He just stepped in a pile of poop. Gross. He spots the two culprits and chases after them on the main road. Wait a minute, you said he couldn't leave his house, one of them shouts. Oh yeah, I forgot about that, the other responds. He looks down and notices that his GPS tracker is flashing red. Uh-oh, trouble is brewing again. He sprints back to his house, but he's one second too late. The police arrive shortly after. As he lays on the ground, handcuffed, he notices Ashley. Boy, he'd much rather see her in handcuffs than himself. For Kale, it's love at first sight. Later, he chats with Detective Parker on the phone. She tells him that he's being let off this time, but it better not happen again. Determined to keep that promise, he studies the GPS range and plots out a makeshift boundary around the house. Now he knows where he's allowed to go. Suddenly, he spots Ashley pulling up into her driveway. But because he's feeling shy, he ducks down under the bushes before rushing inside to avoid being seen. Come on, Kale, don't you know girls love confidence? Just be yourself, bro. Afterwards, he heads upstairs to sneak a peek at Ashley through the window. Dude, not cool. Although, with the lack of internet TV, I guess I understand. A few days later, Ronnie, his best friend, knocks on the door. They haven't seen each other in ages, so Kale gives him a warm welcome. As they ascend the staircase, Kale recounts his recent activities to alleviate his boredom. He hands Ronnie a pair of binoculars and discloses his pastime of observing their neighbors. One particular neighbor, Mr. Pills, stands out as he engages in extramarital affairs with his maid. Kale humorously compares it to reality TV, but assures Ronnie that he is not a stalker, just an observer. Moving on, Kale introduces Ronnie to his favorite subject of observation, Ashley. Later that day, Kale takes extra precautions to avoid setting off alarms as he discreetly continues his surveillance. Unexpectedly, Ashley appears and offers her assistance, creating a brief interaction before her mother calls her away. During the evening while his mother dozes off, Kale watches the news and learns about a recent kidnapping in the suburbs. Finding it dull, he switches to a late-night broadcast of yoga instead. Startled, he momentarily ducks down, thinking he had been spotted, but realizes it's too dark for anyone to see him. Returning to observing Ashley, he witnesses a tense moment when her father confronts her before storming out. After Ashley goes to bed, Kale notices Mr. Turner, another neighbor, arriving home unusually late, driving a car matching the description of the kidnappers. The car, a Mustang with a dent on the front bumper, adds to the suspicion. The next day, Kale decides to investigate further and hides behind his fence, close to the GPS modem radius. Fortunately, it turns out the neighbor only approached the fence to confront a rabbit, relieving Kale. Later, Ronnie returns to Kale's house, and they discuss the recent events, including Ronnie's belief that their neighbor is a kidnapper. Kale redirects their attention to Ashley, suggesting they watch her swimming again through the binoculars. Startled by a loud noise, they drop to the ground, fearing Ashley overheard them. Kale peeks out the window and locks eyes with Ashley, leading to a brief moment of tension. Shortly after, the doorbell rings, and the boys clumsily make their way downstairs to greet Ashley. After a hesitant start, Ashley enters the house, questioning why they took so long to answer the door. 
Suspicious, she heads up to Kale's bedroom and discovers his binoculars. Accusing them of spying on her, Kale awkwardly denies it, managing to convince her that they were only spying on Mr. Turner. They mention the description of his car, but find that Ashley's observation contradicts it. Confused, she questions their motives. Later that night, the trio prepares for a stakeout, using snooping equipment borrowed from Ronnie's uncle. They spend the night engaged in suspicious spying, and eventually they spot Mr. Turner's arrival. However, to their shock, he shows up in a completely different car. As he leads his new acquaintance towards his car, they witness an alarming sight. Fortunately, he surprises them by cutting off the price tag from her new dress, revealing himself to be a sugar daddy, rather than a sinister figure. They react with a mix of relief and amusement. Well, that murder mystery didn't go as planned. The group decides to call it a night, and Kale walks Ashley back home, or at least as far as he can. They share a romantic moment before Kale heads back to his room, but instead of sleeping, he immediately starts spying on Mr. Turner again. This time, through his camera, he sees a woman trying to escape the house. However, he accidentally leaves the flash on while recording the incident. Filled with fear, he drops to the ground and holds the camera above his head, trying to see what's going on. But he can't see anything, so he stands back up and looks through the binoculars. Uh-oh, he's in trouble. Just then, Kale's phone rings and he crawls across the floor to pick it up. It's Ronnie. Kale frantically explains the situation, but as he's doing so, he sees the girl getting back into her car and driving off. It seems like this is a normal thing for Kale. Every guy has a story about that one girl who got away. As Kale is making breakfast, he grabs his knife and questions his neighbor, who happens to be in his house. But before anything escalates, Kale's mother enters the room with grocery bags, explaining that she ran into Mr. Turner at the store. He helped her change her flat tire. Kale's mom then leaves to get the milk from her car, leaving Kale and Robert alone in the kitchen. Things get tense as Robert notices Kale's GPS tracker and questions him. Kale reveals that he had a relationship with his teacher, and Robert empathizes, sharing his own high school experiences. Later, Ashley hosts a party while her parents are away, and Kale can't resist the temptation to spy again. He spots another boy flirting with Ashley, and decides to disrupt the party by playing loud music. Ashley jumps through his window to stop the music and threatens to throw away his iPod. Kale admits to spying on her since she moved in, and tells her all the details he noticed about her personality. Surprisingly, Ashley is into it, and they kiss. Little do they know, their neighbor Robert's window is now covered in blood. They hear loud thuds outside their window and witness him dragging a bloody bag down the stairs. The next day, they decide to investigate. Ronnie is tasked with breaking into Robert's car, while Ashley follows Robert as he shops. They suspect he's on his way home when Kale's phone rings. In a rush, Kale hurries Ronnie to give him the password to the garage. Meanwhile, Ashley accidentally runs into Robert while leaving the parking lot. He confronts her and tells her to leave him alone. Back at home, the three teens discuss their next steps. Ashley suggests they drop the whole thing thinking they've taken things too far. Before the conversation can continue, her mother calls her away once again. It turns out, it's her parents' anniversary and she needs to attend to them. Ashley, with both of her parents still alive and well, is feeling quite lucky compared to her friend Kale. Later that night, Kale continues his investigation with determination. He manages to find and analyze the blueprints for Robert's house. As he wraps up his investigation, Kale develops a portable camera system that streams to his TV. Kale agrees to help Ronnie retrieve his phone, but first, he needs Ronnie to break into Robert's garage with the camera in hand. In the garage, Ronnie finds his phone, but Kale wants something else from the garage. Ronnie spots a bag in the corner of the room and exclaims that it smells terrible. He mentions seeing hairs in it, adding a cheeky remark about not taking his comment out of context. Suddenly, the garage door begins to close, and a panicked Ronnie runs into the house. Kale, wanting to save his friend, grabs a bat and rushes over. Meanwhile, the ankle braces on the intruders make a noise, suggesting that they are fast. Kale pleads with them to check his garage, and they agree. Inspecting the blue bag, they discover a dead deer that Robert had accidentally hit with his car. Back at home, Kale scolds his mom for not understanding the gravity of the situation. She reminds him that he has court the following day and heads over to apologize to Robert. Kale watches from his window as his mom goes to apologize. Suddenly, he receives a text message from Ronnie, instructing him to check the TV. When Kale turns around, he sees Ronnie appearing to be unconscious on the screen. Ronnie quickly reveals that it was just a prank, and he isn't actually dead. Kale resents Ronnie for scaring him and asks if he knows what he just went through. Ronnie explains that he managed to escape from his house and didn't see anything suspicious inside. Kale forgives him and tells Ronnie that his mom went to apologize to Robert. Ronnie hands Kale the video camera so they can review the footage together. As Kale watches the video alone, he notices something alarming. He realizes that the girl who was kidnapped is in the video. Just as this revelation strikes him, Robert attacks his mom in their house. But the chaos doesn't stop there. Robert makes his way to Kale's house and starts playing a twisted game of baseball with Ronnie. Well, sort of. 
Then, Robert goes upstairs to attack Kale, but Kale manages to dodge him using his reflection as a clue. Kale rushes upstairs and tries to unplug the GPS modem, but Robert stops him. Kale gives it his all, but he's overpowered by Robert. Instead, he decides to flee outside in hopes of triggering the alarm. Once again, Robert stops him. He defeats Kale, knocking him out and subjecting him to some intense physical punishment. Kale wakes up in his bedroom to find Robert threatening to pin all the crimes on him. Kale desperately begs Robert not to do this to him, but Robert remains unaffected. He forces Kale to write an admission of guilt, but before he can finish, Ashley breaks into the house. This gives Kale one last opportunity to fight back against Robert. With Ashley's quick assistance, they manage to barricade themselves. Ashley frees Kale, who explains that his mom is in danger at Robert's house. Kale plans to navigate through the GPS radius, but is interrupted by a phone call. Before Robert can capture them, the two teens jump out the bedroom window into Ashley's pool, triggering the alarm on Robert's ankle. They quickly run towards Robert's house, ready to confront him. In the meantime, the officer receives a call to go to Kale's residence, but he chooses to complete his dinner before heading there. Meanwhile, the officer is summoned to Kale's house, yet he opts to finish his meal before making his way over. Come on, man. This is the only time this happens. Returning to Robert's house, Kale desperately searches for his mother, ultimately discovering the concealed crawl space beneath the residence. He breaks open the vent and attempts to enter, only to realize that he is too large to fit. I can't relate to that. Subsequently, he hears a sound emanating from another part of the house and continues his search. He bangs on walls, unintentionally discovers a secret room. Inside, he finds an operating table and numerous massive freezers. He also notices the belongings of the abducted club girl, including a red wig. He moves aside a cupboard, revealing yet another hidden room. How many secrets can one person have? At that moment, the officer arrives at Robert's house and hears noises emanating from within. He enters to investigate, but is unexpectedly attacked and incapacitated by Robert. What a bummer. Meanwhile, Kale falls through the floor of the hidden room and lands in a pit of muddy water, surrounded by Robert's previous victims. Fearful but determined, he manages to escape. Eventually, he locates his mother, who has also endured Robert's torment, and works to set her free. Just before Robert can deliver a fatal blow to Kale, his mother's protective instincts kick in, giving Kale the upper hand. He subdues Robert and throws him down the hole. Finally, the corpse soup is complete. It's a chef's kiss. Shortly thereafter, more police officers arrive, and Kale and his mother safely exit the house. A few days later, we see Kale having his ankle bracelet removed by the detective. You might be the first person who gets one of these things taken off early for good behavior. Kale, now a free man, spends the remainder of his summer vacation with Ashley, cherishing every moment. God, I wish that were me. Ski-bitty-bobbity. Bop-bop. Boom.